Brooks? Yes. Here. Jacobs? Here. Holmberg? Here. Allen? Here. Lund? Here. Uh, approval of minutes? Approved. Brooks? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Holmberg? Yes. Allen? Yes. Lund? Yes. Adoption of agenda. Move to approve. I'll move to adopt. Brooks? Yes. yes. Jacobs? Yes. Holmberg? Yes. Allen? Yes. Lund? Yes. All right. Item <laughs> six, a public hearing. A public hearing on an ordinance annexing certain adjacent territory into the city of Warrensburg, Missouri, known as a portion of Northwest 21 Road, Holden Street. Mayor and City Council, this is the last section of this road that is owned by the county at this point in time. Uh, it has not been annexed into the city between the uh, bridge over 50 highway and the roundabout. This portion runs along. We used to be an old, uh, I believe it's supposed to have a trailer park there, and this was along the west side of that. Um, this piece is between the, where the river grid property was and the portion you annexed last year with the, with the right-of-way on the wire and the actual roundabout right-of-way. So uh, this will complete that strip of the road. The county uh, will, uh, following the annexation, uh, forward a deed uh, granting it for giving that city right-of-way to the city, and that will be on a future agenda to accept that right-of-way. Uh, they have applied for annexation and zoning and the zone will come forward uh, in July. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Right. I'm going to close that public hearing and open a public hearing on an ordinance establishing a GB general business district for property recently annexed into the city of Warrensburg, Missouri located at the southwest corner of 141 Northwest 21 Road. Southwest corner of 141 Northwest 21 Road, adjacent to Holden Street. This is the triangle portion that is owned by Elm Lawning and Trust. And you held a first, a hearing in a first reading of this at your last city council meeting. <coughs> so at this point, that 14 day comment period has passed. We received no uh, objections and would uh, recommend approval of the ordinance at this time. This will be next. Move to approve. This is for adoption or rejection. Brooks? Yes. J 
Jacobs. Yes. Holmberg. Yes. Allen. Yes. Black. Yes. Item 9, first and second reading ordinance. Improperly licensed vehicles. An ordinance amending section 23-370, storage of vehicles on city streets prohibited of the code of ordinances of the city of Orangeburg. Yeah, yeah, we uh, have, have several, several complaints on uh, uh, members of the community regarding the city street without properly licensed. Uh, well, we, we have, have ones that prohibit driving and properly licensed vehicles on the street. It does not prohibit driving and properly licensed vehicles on the street. Uh, we have several complaints on members of the community regarding the city street without properly licensed vehicles on the street. It does not prohibit driving and properly licensed vehicles on the street. Right now, the only thing we have to do with this situation is the 24-hour ordinance that we're going to be using for the city Thank you. 
Still, I mean, you have a car that's expired. You can still put it in your driveway. I mean, that's there's nothing they can do about that. That's on your own private property. But it's just, it's just, well, right, you can't have it on jacks or anything like that. But if it's if it's sitting on all four wheels, then you know, in the driveway, it's fine. But if you're putting it on the street, then that's where we're trying to get a little more control of that. Any other discussion? Something yeah, I'm looking at the definition of ticketing versus notification. Because that's, I've seen the same thing, but one of this is some of these are issues you said these are excuses to move a week later mm -hmm. or updates that can there be something where, regardless of the condition, they have to be warranted with. Whatever it is, right. a seven-day period, regardless of where it's parked, if it's on public property, because I, I get it's, and if it moves a couple of around the block, then it's a. And some references it, cat and mouse. Mm -hmm. I think you need to have something with. Has speed to it, not just ticketing, but it shall be remedied in a certain period, not uh, ticketing where somebody but plays comes, some game of. That ticket comes up a fine, right? Right. It, it, would, it, would, be, it would be typical in a situation like this, especially in the initial period after adoption, to provide a uh, notice with a reference to the ordinance and the specific standard. In the ordinance uh, as a part of that notice. And certainly, I would want to work with the, with the police before any tickets were filed on the municipal board to ensure that that was part of the process, at least in the initial first several months. And if I'll tell me if there's something with uh, some that maybe you can't just go around thinking people, you have to have. This is a problem which shall be resolved right. instead of just clogging up uh, the place that I did not. You know, and I know that uh, our officers will always try to make contact with that person, uh, even usually with the boys. But, but I understand what you're, what you're talking about. Um, and I don't know that you're going to be able to uh, tow or do those, those type of things at the very first. I mean, you're going to want to go through that process. So, no, so this is a step in that direction, not quite yes. that strict yet. We want to kind of phase it in, and uh, we can always address uh, in the future. But this is a step in the right direction. Sir, can I get your name, please? My name is Peter Thank you. And I'm, 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 I'm we need to see what, in what way the section is being uh, amended. That is so just saying we shall amend it. It's in the council packet. It's you can download it. It's in the council packet on the website. What we're seeing here is the, the title of the item they're talking about. They put it in the packet and it's available publicly. It's the full amendment that's being proposed. Page 31 <coughs> of the 166 page document. Uh, <laughs> under this, the same one that, page 31 of that document is, is uh, where the ordinance language starts. Yes. And then 32 will give you the specifics of that section 23 370. I move to second reading. I move to move to second reading by title. Brooks? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Holmberg? Yes. Allen? Yes. Lund? Yes. 
This is an ordinance amending section 23-370, storage <coughs> of vehicles on city streets prohibited by the Code of Ordinances of the City of Lawrenceburg. This is for adoption or rejection. Brooks? Yes. Jacobs? Yes. Holmberg? Yes. Allen? Yes. Mudd? Yes. Uh, next, we move to item 10, other business. <coughs> First item is building safety and maintenance ordinances discussion. Uh, requested by Mr. Peter Sickle. Yes, yes I'm Peter Sickle. Come on up and, and okay. uh, address it that way. We can hear you on uh, on YouTube. Well, <laughs> 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 so, uh, they can hear you on YouTube. <laughs> it's a very fire and brimstone. I don't think in my years here I've really seen ordinances really enforced for the betterment the city. Specifically, I think that our, top, our first, if not necessarily our second biggest source of outside income is academic tourism. And let me just first follow up on myself. I'm a cost engineer. I've got business degrees. I'm a licensed professional engineer. This, this is what I do for a living. I talk I tell, in this case, to the federal government, how to save money. We're looking, and specifically, I brought up with an individual, I'm not going to get into it, said I'm not going to deliver a fire and brimstone. But there's just junk piled up here. I haven't come to this city, came here. So 15 years ago, I delivered my <coughs> oldest daughter to school here. Fell in love with the city, moved here myself, bought a uh, house, I've got another property. It's, I've got a financial investment in this city. I think we all have got a emotional and financial tie to the city. And I think that specifically, some of the maintenance of some of these homes have gone beyond unsafe. Not to point out which one of you members, but I brought, I showed photographs to a member of a group here showing basic it's just, I can read through your um, ordinances and tell you the violations, and I can tell you from the FPA of how the violation comes into place. The point comes down to this. It's an investment in our community to start trying to at least hold people accountable because it becomes a, a snowballing effect. As we invest in our city, we're investing in our life, and it could be the snowball downward, or we can build it up this community. In my viewpoint, the place that I remember 15 years ago. So are you asking for the city to dedicate additional resources for enforcement of existing nuisance codes? No, I'm asking for additional resources. I'm asking for teeth. So do you think that's the Previously, when I worked on behalf of the Department of Labor, when I walked into a site, about found something to be unsafe or a previous notification of any violation. There was a penalty, so there was no questions. So what, what are you advocating for the teeth to be? Enforcement, okay. I have the whole test. I'm looking for the fire, delivering the fire and brimstone. But in, in 2015, you brought up a ordinance, Article um, 8, property value of 
specific enforcement of our current ordinances, or do you think the yes. current ordinances need to be strong? Which of those are you asking? I'm just saying that there's ordinances out there. I am watching through time of things which I feel are cycling down. My opinion is just my opinion, and that's the way this ordinance is written is that the city inspectors have the right to render their decisions. I have one out there that was told that basically it is what it is. It takes a citizen to step up. How long ago was that? Excuse me? How long ago was that? Oh, uh, I think it was a month ago. No, it was less than a month ago. It was um, probably six or six weeks ago because I was here a month ago just to sit there and listen to the city council. Uh, no, the reason why I'm asking, I know a couple of years ago we made a change to our ordinance that. that 2015 or so, then our ordinance changed, yes. Right. I mean. For some of this stuff, it's a, it's a process that we can cite them, but then if they don't do anything, you have to go through a court process. And I mean, we have cases out there that we're, you know, going, 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 going. So. Well, we do have some very good people that are saying we would go through a process for them to be able to enforce their job. We need to go through a process to empower and give the tools to enforce existing ordinances. Do, do you so I, said, I still have pictures, pictures in here. here. I delivered the one that the individuals up here saying, okay. what, what do they say now? Drive around. Oh, I do. There's, there's the van assistance. And an overblown uh, loss. Do you by chance remember the, the the city worker's name that you spoke with? I can look it up. Uh, actually, the person did follow through with this. And the point comes, comes down, down to is that from what I understand, from the one specific 
painted building that I bought the house with the painted or it's about eleven months now in the it's a place to go there. Uh what the red is drawn in from what I understand that particular owner has been notified. I'm not talking about which was going on actually we're talking about uh, uh, two people under the beam under the I'm going over. I'm not talking about specific properties. I'm talking about, about driving around, around and, and say, as, as I have friends, friends and visitors, and visitors, and visitors and I have <coughs> people in and out, out and they're not proud to walk down, walk down, down to, to uh, the 60 market and walk in the past. Um, I'm maintaining lawns, holes in buildings, uh, and there's some people that really have shown a lot of care, in which case um, I'm just saying we we'll go to the end. National Code, as well as our own ordinance. River 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 as, as I said, I said in my previous work, work we should have places, places now. Federal places. places. This will no longer be occupied. Come on, what's specific job places? This, this will, will be remedied. Period. Period. This was identified, identified a year ago. ago. It is still, still here. here. It is it's unsafe. <coughs> Period. Period. Done. Enforced. Thank you, Mr. Sickle. Next item 10 request for funding from the Stevenson's Fund for the Lions Club. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. I moved to give him $500 for the Dr. 
Yes. 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 Hawthorne Neighborhood Improvement District Debt Discussion. that 
one million set aside. We're going to use the four hundred thousand to like, to offset it for part of that. Am I understanding yes. right? Okay. Yes, sir. We we were taking that four hundred thousand on that, so we would basically be taking around five hundred thousand from the general fund. Okay. So help me out with you on three and four, because mm -hmm. something keeps sticking in my head from four. When you said once the refunding is finalized, the city would not need to restrict additional funds, but in scenario three, you're almost a million going into. Yes. See, scenario four, we will be paying uh, one point five million upfront. Mm -hmm. So it was it was going out of our account and be used to uh, refund the set. In scenario three, you would you would only be taking 520,000 from the general fund <coughs> up front to uh, refund the debt. And then you would just restrict a million dollars. Where in four, it's a little different, but then you wouldn't have to restrict any funds, right? You wouldn't have to restrict any funds, but we would have, it would be a million five gone. That, I mean, yeah, right, I got it. But then you've got the million there sitting there instead of paying it there and never having to do the final, never having to put any additional funds in. So the, I'm, I'm, the difference, the difference here is the restricted portion is going to look better on our financial statement. Okay, that's why I need to help with the WGNY staff on that. We would actually have the money in the bank. Okay. Uh, we would, it would still show. It wouldn't show that we were out of. Uh, even though we will be eventually. We wouldn't show it would be out of a million five. And with the time value of money, that money would, would generate interest and then help us pay off the loan. And that's all these scenarios are assumed based on us not selling another piece of that land. Yes, they are. Okay. And they're also assumed uh, with that 2% two, two interest rate right. for the life of the. Uh, so anything we sell, we'll take, we'll be able to take it off that million and, and mm -hmm. loosen up that money there. Okay. So really what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the, the annual payment down for us more manageable. And right now you're paying probably close to a quarter of a million dollars a year in principal and interest. So how do we help manage that in, in a responsible way? So option one is basically just refinancing and getting a lower interest rate, right? The next two scenarios we're talking about anywhere from taking some money we have on hand now and buying down the principal a little bit, all the way up to basically paying them all the way down to such a point that the income that's coming off of those assessments basically pays for it out, put it in the original financial burden on the city. Um, so as you, as you go through, so you see in option one, you're looking at anywhere from $113,000 to $144,000 a year in, in a payment from the general fund that we have to figure out how to fit into our budget. Okay. Scenario two, that goes anywhere from $98,000 to $120,000. Option three goes anywhere from $73,000 a year up to $95,000 a year. And then scenario four, we're not coming up with any money from the general fund to help pay for that. But you tighten things up considerably uh, in, in taking a million dollars out of our, our reserves to help pay that off. And as Matthew said, <coughs> because he's been very good at being able to invest this money and get some interest off, you're not going to have that million dollars anymore to make interest off of. Mm -hmm. And so between managing the debt or paying it all off, you're actually further ahead to hold on to some of that little bit, earn interest, and that actually increase your costs when you take into account time value of money. So the reason we look at option number three is one, we already have that 520,000 that the council has already restricted and set aside. So we already have that money available to invest. And it makes the money, so instead of trying to come up with $250,000 a year to pay a debt payment, now we're coming up with a debt payment of $73,000, 95000 And if you look at over the long term um, savings <coughs> of this, uh, it was only like a difference of maybe, what was it, $10,000? From one. From one to the difference from option three and four. Uh, okay. Yeah, about twenty thousand. About twenty thousand. A little less than twenty thousand. So going from now until twenty thousand thirty one, saving twenty thousand dollars, in my opinion, wasn't worth the financial pressure we put on us to be able to do that. Option three, in my opinion, kind of balances that out. Um, it decreases exposure, allows us to capitalize on time value of money and um, basically gives us more freedom for the future and, and be able to do that with a better balance of the four options, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. I didn't mean to catch up. Uh, that, and 
and that's all, there's always an opportunity for us to receive a higher interest rate too. But this is assuming that at two percent, just because uh, we're sort of in the finance world, there's there's a thought that a recession is coming, and so we I wanted to balance track that amount. Currently, we're getting about two point nine percent. So there's so this a, is a conservative. Issue. So this is conservative. Yes. What's the term on this, this new refinancing? What's the term? The term like how long is it going to be? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Like 23 years? 2031. Oh, 2031. Okay. Council not listed on the agenda. Is it the right on the arrow? All right. <laughs> Hello, I'm David Ewing from 1024 All Online. I'm here again. I'm here to express my concerns. Uh, I'm going to complain, but I want to make sure I, just, I want to justify why I've got these complaints. 
but I've also got some concerns that I'm bringing up. I'm hoping that you're willing to listen to me again, even though I, I voted for everybody except Ms. Allen, so I'm hoping that you're willing to listen to me for the next few minutes. And uh, I will be expressing what I can, and I need the PowerPoint to stay on, on task here. I'd like to invite you to our neighborhood, everybody to our neighborhood here. This is what we see at night, and it's worse in the last few days because they have the, the lights in the back parking lot that sit about four feet, it's like a lighthouse. I would like to really invite you as individuals to come by the neighborhood so that you can actually see what we are seeing every night now. You understand that we can walk around our house at night without turning on a single light. And this is uh, quite invasive. This is just a start. Mm -hmm. So please come by. I have asked uh, Ms. Carroll and uh, I hope that Mr. Coleman will come by too to see what we are uh, having to deal with. Now, to begin with, I've got a list here. And this particular list of some of the things that we negotiated. Now, I'm hoping that you're listening to me, but I don't represent the entire neighborhood. But even though it's just me, I guarantee you that I would have lots of people, angry people here, to voice and probably confirm everything that I'm saying here. It's easier to talk with one person tonight. And you will notice that, and I've got to look a little closer because I don't have this over here, so can I approach over here? These are the things, things that we wrote down. We had two meetings. We had one with the whole neighborhood, and then we had one with just four neighbors that were behind the property. My property in particular is going to be behind. You'll we'll notice that the very first one that we have on my notes was a berm is a minimum of 10 feet in height above the floor level, the first floor of the hotel. Then it talks about the trees. Then later on, it talks about you know parking and you know, the parking about the lights. But the very last it says any lights attached to the back of the hotel are to be directed lights or preferred or below the third level. Now these are all part of the discussion. This particular note that I have also is next is uh, my wife's notes from that particular one. The other one is what the architect had written down and I had, had brought you know it's basically the same thing about talking about a firm and uh, parking lights and, and directed lights that come down below. Now the lights that are currently behind and that just have turned on have no direction. They they, they are very bright. Oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is my wife's notes instead. And it talks about the pavement, it talks about increased distance from the property line to number seven, uh, trash container. We talk about stairwells being different around so we have fewer uh, lights um, dealing with stuff like this. But I want to show you this particular picture, and this is why I want to make sure that you understand why I am complaining, and I'm not just complaining. This is the negotiated firm. This is just one of several things that took place. And I, I wish I could point it out to you. Can I come on stage just a second? I don't know if you want to point, we have screens down here. Oh, yeah. yeah. That might be because we can see that. Yeah, that would be interesting. Now, when we talk about this 30 feet from, this is, the, this is my property line, their property line. We talk about 30 feet for several reasons. One, there would be trees left there, so when the water comes down, it would slow down the erosion of the property. And the other thing is that that's number one. Uh, number two that takes place was if we keep, uh, besides the erosion, uh, the whole firm of our staff was supposed to be for our safety, our health, and our security, and also for our privacy. But I believe all those different things, but right now, the firm, what, what firm there is there, is right on the property line. And so, as a result, you can imagine water from the downside is now coming into this property. It's being directed. And furthermore, whenever you compact soil right on top of triggers, what few trees we have here made us. So those are a couple of concerns that we have. But there was a reason for putting it there. Plus, the drain, there's a drain on that side. And by being having that space between the drain, I'll address that again, it would allow the water coming down from between the properties to go down the drain. Because the hotel has two drains in the front. It has two drains in front, so everything would come out from the other side of the hotel. We go to those two drains. A lot of people put those in that one. Right now, here's what the drain is. Right now, it's scoped out even more. And you can see that not only does it drain the stuff between the trees, it also drains stuff on the hotel. This is going to be something I'm arguing with a little bit later in places. Now, this is the original property agreement. You will notice, notice the buck goes across, across the back of the line. It is 30 feet from the property. I got, I got this picture, picture from the architect. I have, I have the same picture on the information, information that was distributed 
uh, from the city to people wanting to make bids on the land division. So this is not an unknown. This was something that was agreed to. It was distributed. This is the way the landscapers understood it was going to happen. That one individual on the property, and I just quote some of the things that come from the particular item here. Now I'm looking back from my property here, and on this one I'm standing on my bottom porch. Do you see the back door of the hotel? Do you see how wide that hotel door is? How would you like to have 24 hours of the light coming across that? Now I'm going to take a little close up here. I am standing on the lowest part of my yard. So the burn that you see there, you see the low on my side, I'm holding the camera level. So that burn is this height right here, camera height. And remember the hotel floor is higher than the lowest part of my yard. My yard is even lower. May I ask a question? Yes. Uh, I'm Scott. So I haven't been out here and hadn't heard uh, previous to this, but what you're saying is that the burn that was supposed to be 30 feet negotiated is 10. Am I hearing you correctly? Basically, they didn't do as they were supposed to be 10 feet tall. It was supposed to be all the way across the property. It was supposed to have trees on top of the burn, which is going to be one of my concerns at this point here. There's, there's darker shade now. At this point, I at least got burned. My neighbor to the east has a hill. You are seeing the middle of my property here. So, and you're seeing the down part, like the one up in the burn. There's, there's nothing. When, you, when you're standing on the hotel itself, this is what you see. You do not even see the clearly burn from the hotel floor I'm standing. Just looking down, there's no camera tricks here. I wish I could take better pictures here. Yeah. But, but here, Mr. Moore, I am looking to the west across my neighbor's yard. Do you see a burn at all? I will come and visit with you. I will take that in that you did. I'm not going to come in here as far as I can see. I want to see this may be a comment that you want to do in private session too. No, I have no way. <laughs> it's all transparent. But so basically, we're saying. Oh, discussion council. This is my point. There's not any And my, 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 my business we're bringing up tonight is they're starting to trim down what the firm has to decide what happens. Now, there is a small hill behind David and Valerie's uh, house, but I mean, it's a small, it's a small thing, and it, it really is a firm. So, do you, do you see the parking lot there? Do you see the loss? Now, the whole idea of the firm, which was an important thing for me, which I checked every month almost, and this uh, Carol can verify was. Very vigilant, try to be. Was to make sure that the was there because we wanted the privacy of a backyard. We wanted to be not have to hear the sounds so much of the cars, and we didn't want to see the lights of everybody backing up to whatever hours that they're coming in and stuff. This is not going to do that particular item here. So, uh, these are my concerns. And that the burn was constructed specification that we agreed on. Water is being directed onto our yard, which is a legal matter, I think, or a possible legal matter it's going to be. Water is not being sufficiently drained by the way that drainage on that last few rains. It would make it a pool because it couldn't drain fast enough. And we're worried about insects and stuff being got there. The number of windows in the back of the hotel in, uh, it was supposed to be only 36 windows on the back, and you're going to see a whole bunch of windows that are there, and I'm not sure what happened in that negotiation, because it was supposed to be fewer by large the lighting in the back of the hotel does not mean our negotiated agreement as being low or shielded down. And here's my additional concern. There is no burn all the way across the property. Are we going to make sure there's going to be a fence and trees? Now, the trees are supposed to be on top of the burn, but you're going to say, well, we've got drainage ditch there. Are we not going to put trees there at all? Because that's part of it as well. You know, we're not talking about trees that are going to grow big overnight. We're talking about trees that are going to take a long time to do that. So, Number six is my concern about what happens since we've had so many things not fulfilled as agreed upon. Take place over here. You know, I checked my email with Mr. Tiedemann, this is my resource, about what we had agreed to. And I checked my email, checked my list, yes, this is what we agreed to, I have email. The landscapers who were interested in bidding on, I'm going to push the thing, I'm sorry, I'm approaching you guys. 
this is the type of letter that anybody was interested in landscaping. Ms. Gable. Thank you. Mr. Lambert. Mr. Jacobs. Mr. Jacobs, sir. This is just a copy of the letter, the front part of the letter that was distributed saying this is what are the specs for this property. If you read it and take the time, and I know I'll take a whole bunch of time for you, but this is important obviously to us. Because you're going to step arms in there, and you're going to see some other things. I'm sorry I didn't copy all of it because it talked about lighting and, and some other things that take place over here. Number three, just to let you know, I wrote a letter to the owner of the hotel expressing my concern and tried to do this very diplomatically. I'm a face to face person when I have a problem. I think that's the best way to work at it. I said, look, I think we have a problem here. I have concerns about the water, I have concerns about the trees dying, and I'm definitely concerned about the lighting and the burn. And I sent my certified mail, and she refused it. But I will give you a copy of the letter that I had sent. And I have pictures of the property to do that. So I am trying my best to see if I can find any way we can make a better situation for uh, myself and the neighbors, of course. I'm not trying to be totally selfish there. But this is a letter I can find very tactful. And I, I hate it when I try to negotiate or talk to somebody and they refuse to talk very much. I, I can't afford more than a certified mail. But I did send up a certified mail. Now this is this is this is my thing here. Okay. As I'm trying to wind down here, you know, all of us can make a will, and it can be legal. But what we do is we really go to a lawyer because we want our feelings, expressions, our wishes put into proper language, so when the time comes, it'll be carried out. <coughs> I feel that we've got a problem here, that our expression, our negotiated thing, our time that we spent trying to find a way of, of getting things to get together was not properly communicated, and it definitely doesn't seem to be properly enforced. I wrote number two changes. You see, we got, we got the contractor, the architect, the hotel, the neighborhood. And if there's a major change, if there was a major change in something you were building, you would expect to be notified of it. You would say, hey, we've got to move this wall. We've got to do this. So when one party changes something, and it doesn't change the others, this is an ethical question to me. And we were never notified that Burns was, 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 was officially changed or anything else. So you know, it, it bothers me that because of the enforcement that the city doesn't always enforce those things. So we're so money happy to get this hotel to come in because we want income for the thing that we're not. And this isn't just this decision. These are some other decisions and, and expressions made by other citizens as well is that, is that we, we do these things and we, we are jeopardizing maybe the health and safety and definitely privacy of uh, some of our citizens. Last but not least, I'll put this remote into my computer. This is what I really would expect, and I would really hope that at some point you will discuss this privately or whatever. I really would like to have it negotiated, find out why this, this plan was changed on the burn, why it is, because it is not acceptable. And then we've got to make sure those trees and fence are supposed to be where they're supposed to be all the way across. The lights are terrible. You can drive by tonight and you can see why we would be uh, irritated by that. I don't know what we can do about reducing light from the windows. If the, the owner will put curtains or something to reduce, there's not supposed to be that many windows. And certainly that back door that's only 90 feet from our property is going to be a headache. And of course, uh, being uh, the water being drained properly and legally. It was a long presentation. I'm here again. And I hope that you can see why I'm still irritated by something that, that I have a basis for the complaint and then the other things I'm concerned. Do you have any, even though we can't discuss things again, do you have any questions for me? Please come on by, see the burn or the lack thereof at yourself, and you can see why this is not a feasible situation. Thank you for the time you gave me. Thank you, Mr. Union. Right, next is mayoral appointments. Uh, I believe council was uh, sent several applications uh, via email. I'm just going to kind of buzz through these and uh, hopefully we can do some time. I have one big 
white. If anybody has any questions or objections, please uh, go on out and spit them out, please. All right, so Children's Memorial Advisory Commission, Nancy Anderson Park, I'd like to appoint Sarah Burke. The Energy and Sustainability Tax Task Force, uh, to reappoint Steve Fox and Bill Miller. Historic Preservation Commission, Francis Ellis. Park and Rec, Jason Duffy, Ashley Carter, and Ava Clark. Tree Board, Raymond Crisp, Stephen Wilson, and Depot Renovation Board, Mayor Lund. Matters from the mayor and or city council. Anybody got anything for the good cause? All right, the city manager's report. Well, it's been uh, a busy time here since the last council meeting. Um, a lot of us have on your city manager's report in there. It did have a, a, a fairly productive trip uh, to Las Vegas. That does not sound enthusiastic. <laughs> <What's there? laughs> Thank you. 
here today, if I'm reading this correctly, we're about 3.75, 3% behind. So going all year on our Right, that's what I was looking at. From there over here, we're down. Um, you had a very um, 
successful historical walk um, a couple weeks ago. It was a rescheduled event, but we had over 50 people come out and participate. And then we also had a, a fundraiser for a farm to table that goes to the farmer's market last week that we also had to move inside. So um, we just appreciate the, the city support for Main Street, and um, I did submit my report, and that is in your uh, packet, I believe. Yeah, I'd just like to say thank you very much to those that attended the groundbreaking ceremony last week um, and as well as the event. Thank you. Looking forward to going back to the really exciting event for um, the Magnolia Garden. The garden walk at Magnolia. Oh. I, I, all right. <laughs> yes, thank you, thank you very much. We also have a really exciting ceremony tomorrow for the library, some of their new programs that they have at the library. And I um, would like to invite everyone as Marcy has joined the white men. A lot of people are going to be coming into our community and eating, sleeping, and uh, shopping in our stores and hopefully going out with us.